Hey, beautiful people. Um, this is Patrice with Perfumes with Pat. But as you can see, we're not going to be talking about perfumes today. Um, in my intro video, I was telling you about how I was diagnosed with the COVID. Um, so I just wanted to give you um, a little history on my battle of the COVID. Maybe this will help someone if they're currently having um, symptoms or this will help someone tomorrow. So on March the 14th, my daughter... The 13th? The 13th, that was a Friday, I believe. Um, my daughter got married. And, you know, my husband started feeling sick from the wedding. But um, he he was, ha he was you know, having some crazy symptoms. And we didn't really, honestly, we didn't pay anything, any mind to it. Because we thought it was the food. And, you know, it gave him like an upset stomach or whatever. Um so the wedding that was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I went to work. And when I got to work, I went out with a coworker and then, you know, she wasn't feeling good. And, you know, all of a sudden I started having like a low grade fever. Um, my, my temperature was like 99.6. I was like, okay, well, I'm good. I put my mask on and I was just like, you know, if it get any higher, I'm going to go home. I don't think it got it. It, it got to about 99.8, so I did decide to go home. Um, I got home about 3 o'clock. I went and I laid down. I felt I didn't feel anything else. I just felt like I was something was coming on, like sinuses, something. I, I didn't really, you know, understand how to explain it. All I know is that it just came on real quickly. So that was Monday. On Tuesday, um, I went to work. I was fine. I wore a mask. I still had a low-grade fever, but I was fine, you know, um, I got there and it went up to 101 in a matter of it, it was not I got there at 830 and about 10 o'clock I was at 101. So one of the doctors, they had to see me. They sent me to um, urgent care and <clears throat> I got home and I picked up my husband because he wasn't feeling good either. So, you know, I thought that I was going to go get, they told me that I would get tested and whatever, whatever. I got to urgent care. They had to do like this, you know, big workup and all of this stuff. I got there and I, I was like completely out of it. You know, I was so impatient because I had my kids at home. My kids never stayed home by themselves, you know, before. Um, so I got I stayed there about five hours and I still wasn't tested. It was like, you know, it was a big deal with them testing me and all of this stuff. Still wasn't tested. So I was like, you guys made me drive two hours, wasted my time, came up here and no testing. So that was Wednesday. I stayed home on um, Thursday and they shut the facility down because a lot of people wasn't feeling good at that moment. Um... And then Friday, they said, Patrice, we're going to send you for testing. So they sent literally the entire employees on Friday to get tested. My husband did not get tested because, you know, employee, he, don't, he didn't work there. So I went and I got tested. Um, the test was Friday. I didn't <clears throat> hear anything back from those people for another, I kid you not, 10 to 12 days. Um, so that was Friday, Saturday. Oh my God. I felt like a bus hit me. I was having fever, abdominal pain. I was having headache. Um, I was nauseated. I could not smell. I could not taste. Um, and, and I was so weak. I was so fatigued. Um, I stayed in bed Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I was in bed. It was me and my husband and my poor two kids, you know, they're 13 and under. Um, <clears throat> they made us tea and, you know, all kind of stuff. They try to really take um, good care of us. It was, it was a mess. Um, and then about Saturday, now I, I'm, I know my husband's sick and I'm sick, but he didn't look so, so, so sick. He looked like he was getting better. But, you know, when I hear his reports, it's like he was dying. But, you know, he didn't want to say anything to get me worried because I, in my mind, I was dying. Right. So that Saturday. So a week, an entire week passed now. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm feeling better. I'm like, whoo, I feel much better. That was Saturday. I felt so much better. But I knew that I was a little congested. So in the process of it, I was just like. 
oh my God, like I'm so congested. By Sunday morning, I was literally dying. I could not breathe. It's like an elephant was sitting on my chest. I was having palpitations. I would hear whoosh, whoosh in my ears. I, I could hear my pulse. I was so, I was, and, and I'm not an anxious person. I used to get up at three o'clock in the morning, walk outside, and then just to get some you air in my lungs. So this was going on for about, you know, a few days. I, I decided that I had to go to the emergency room. So I got ready. I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell my family because I was like, you know, because I'm a nurse, I knew that there's nothing that they can do for you. You know, they don't even understand this disease. They don't understand what's going on. They don't understand how to treat it. They don't understand anything. It's new to them. You understand? But because I wanted a little reassurance as to what maybe... I don't know what I thought. When I got to the emergency room, um, they were like, there's nothing they can do. The doctor was like, there's nothing. I said, sir, I'm dying. Like, I cannot breathe. You know, and I wanted to cry so bad. But because he had such a blank look on his face, I refused to, like, show him how, you know, serious I was about, like, I really need help. So I demanded that he did a, a chest x-ray. And he basically refused. So I had to pull out, listen to me, dude. I work here. I'm a nurse. And I'm going to need you to do this chest x-ray. And when he heard that, <clears throat> he was just like, okay, okay. I'm going to do the chest x-ray on him. By then, I wanted to punch him in his head because I, I couldn't believe it took all of that for me to actually get this thing, you know, done. So I did it and everything. And I waited. I had to go back to my car and wait. That's how they were doing it. And... He told me, he said, the results are back. He called me back and he was like, you have COVID. <clears throat> he said, you have early, he said, you have, co this is what he said. He said, you have COVID in both lungs. So I had double pneumonia with COVID, right? And I knew I had COVID already. He didn't have to tell me that. But I guess because the news, I guess when you hear it out of the doctor's mouth, it kind of like devastated me. And I was like, oh my God, this is how people is dying because I literally felt, I don't understand how to explain it, but I felt like life was being depleted on out of me. I felt like life was leaving my body with every breath. It's like it became harder to breathe. And, you know, I remember walking when he told me that he was like, Miss Patrice, just go home and take deep breaths. So in my mind, I was just like, this man is a fool go home and take deep breaths? How was that going to help me? So I said, well, is there any medication, any antibiotics, anything? And he was just like, no, you know, and, and I knew there was nothing that he can do. I just, I guess I just wanted like something a little bit more comforting, you know? So I, I went to my car and I instantly broke down. I cried and cried and cried. And then my pastor called my pastor's wife, Phyllis Miles. Um, Christian Eagles, Eagles Christian Ministries, Pastor and Sister John. Um, she called, she's like, hey, you know, I'm her daughter-in-law. So she's like, hey, um, daughter-in-law, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm good. Um, she was like, well, why you sound like that? I said, well, I just left the emergency room and they told me that I had COVID. And she's like, she kind of stood silent, you know? And she was like, can you dry? I said, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And she was like, I hear it on you. You know, and she was just like, I'm going to hang up because I know you can't really talk. And she was like, you want me to come? You know, I could come and get someone to basically, can you drive? You know, do you need someone to come and get you? And I was like, no, you know, at the moment I couldn't talk because I was crying so hard. You know, and I got home and my um, husband, he, I told him, I said, oh, I was at the emergency room. He was just like, and I said, well, they told me I had COVID in my lungs. And he's like. Well, I was crying. He was like, babe, why are you crying? And I said, because they told me that I have COVID in my lungs. And he's like, babe, we're both sick. We knew we had this thing now for like eight days. So why are you crying? You're just going to make yourself, you know, anxious and, <clears throat> you know, and I was happy that he told me that because I'm telling you, I was dying. 
literally i stood outside i would not leave now i'm everyone knows me i'm a very independent person like i'll go here there oh babe i'm here and he was like oh okay when were you gonna tell me you know i'm, I'm that type of person but i would not leave his side because i was dying i would not leave like if he left the room where are you what well, um uh, um uh, where are you going where are you going you know because like i i felt death you know and and I, I don't know how to explain it or let you understand you know how it was but and i could feel like burning coming from my lungs like i felt it down here like i felt the burning it would it started on the the left side and then it went to the right side and i would feel it would come up and then i felt like like something was sitting on my chest and preventing air from coming in i've never felt like that in all my life you know um what helped me was my pastor's wife so sister john that's you know that's what we call her sister john would come over and she would drop off now i have a really long driveway she would drive up drop off stuff at the door and leave and then said hey i dropped off some soup i dropped off some medicine i want you to take i dropped off um this and she she would drop off literally 15 to 20 things and i'm the type of person like i don't really take what people make little we're jamaicans jamaicans believe in herbs and turmeric and ginger and 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 coconut and orange and lemon i'm not that per i'm even though i'm jamaican I'm like, I'm not taking that. Let me tell you something. I forgot about, I forgot about, I'm not taking that pat. It was more like she made a mix up with orange. Listen to the mix up. Orange, onion, garlic, turmeric, ginger, menthol. I know there's more stuff in it, but those are the things I remember. And it was like a mix up in a little jar. So she was like, okay, I want you to take a shot of that. And I'm like, okay. So my husband took a little shot glass and took some. And then, you know, I, usually I wouldn't take it, but because I knew I was dying. Oh yeah. I took two teaspoons. Good, good. It went down and I felt when it kind of like burnt, of course it's going to burn because it was like onion. So I felt when it burned, you know, as it, as it went down, it was burning. And I was just like, oh my goodness. So I said, <laughs> you know, you have to have a little humor. So I said to myself, in in me, I said, I think my mother-in-law was trying to kill me <laughs> with that thing. So then I said it to my husband. I said, babe, that thing was horrible. He was like, mm. yeah, it was. The next day, shorten it, that intense shortness of breath was gone she told me to um take orange peels boil it really hot and then um go underneath it and and you know sniff it in and get it in your nose and get it in in your mouth the heat and let me tell you something that helped so much um, she got us a humidifier and she got some menthol crystals and we put it in the humidifier. That helped. And then to bring back my taste, I would put um, Vicks on my tongue, like a teeny bit on my tongue. And I don't know what that did, but let me tell you something. Within three days, my taste and smell was back. Um... I ate oranges like crazy, you know, because you have to build up your immune system. So she made us like beet juice, beet ginger. I don't really know what else she put in it, but I know I tasted beet. It was red. So it had to be beets, beets, stuff like, let me tell you something. Thank God. Thank God for Sister John. Thank God. Because if not, I'm telling you. I don't know who would have got us these things because we were both in really bad shape. And, you know, with COVID, no one could come to your house. So, you know, and my mom was sick. My mom's household was sick. So my mom couldn't do anything either. She was home fighting her own COVID battles, you know. So thank God for people in your life. So the reason I did this video is just to make everyone aware that, hey, listen, if you're sick, don't hide it. You know, tell someone you're sick. 
Because guess what? I'll come to your house and drop off those same things that my pastor's wife dropped off to help you too. And I could tell you how to get over it. Listen, pray. Because this thing is not here to play with any of us. And I know they're saying it's a black people's disease, it's a this disease, it's a that. No, it's a everybody's disease. When this thing get a grasp on you, you have to literally fight for it to let you go. And if you give up, if you are weak, if you don't pray, you will lose the battle. You will lose the battle. You will lose the battle. Don't lose this battle. Um, if you if you if you know a loved one that has it and hit us up, we'll let you know what we did. You know, we'll pray. The pastors will pray. That's what they did. You know, this is a time where we definitely need prayer in our lives. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't the grace of God and God's people who he put in our life to come and help us and make this and drop off tissue and drop off soup. I, I man, I had a personal chef for 20 days. But if it wasn't Sister John, it was my mom. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's become aware. This thing is going to be here for a while. Put your mask on. Wash your hands. Protect the people that live in your home. My mom is immunocompromised. Protect people like that. Don't go nilly-willy like the world is just going and this too shall pass. Yes, it, it shall pass. But while we're in it right now, please protect each other. Help each other. You know, and I thank God for all the nurses, all the doctors, all the essential workers, the delivery people who's out there risking their lives, you know, for us to be safe. So if they're doing that, please do your part. Stay home. Wear your mask. Social distancing. It's a real thing. Do it. You know, we could party a year later. We could party. We could go out. We could go out to eat. We could go to the wherever, but be safe. And if you have this thing, there is help. There is help. Call me, Instagram me or whatever they call it. And I will let you know how I got over. And I know Chris Cuomo, thank God for you. You have to, what he said, you have to fight back. You have to fight this thing and you can do it and you can do it and win. This thing has claimed over 50,000 of our people, people of different colors, different races, different beliefs, different religion. Let's fight back. And how we're going to fight back is by sticking together, listening to the guidelines, wearing your mask, and the most important thing, pray. Thank you. Don't forget to tune in next time. If you have a comment, um, if you liked it, if you don't didn't like it, let me know. Please subscribe to my channel, Perfumes with Pat, and I'm praying for everyone. Thank you so much. You probably would have heard that Patrice passed away, but thank God for mercy, for grace, for life. Thank God for you. Ta-ta, beautiful people.